Hi Year 12, um, we're going to start having a look at uh, Feynman diagrams in this video. We're going to look at the Feynman diagram for electron scattering um, or electron positron scattering. We'll have a look at both. This is uh, just a, I suppose, a fairly simple example so that we can understand what Feynman diagrams are showing us and also how to draw them correctly. So if we think about the situation of electron scattering, this is just two electrons that are perhaps coming near to each other, perhaps traveling something like that. And they're going to exert a force on each other because they're both charged. So they're gonna interact through the, the electromagnetic force. And so we might end up observing something like that, both particles going to change direction. Now that's happened because they've exerted a, a force on each other, in this case a repulsive force. Um, and if we ask the question what is actually happening to cause that force, how do they know that they are near another charged particle? Um, in particle physics the answer to that is that they exchange a particle, so a force carrying particle um, or a gauge boson. Um, and in the case of an electromagnetic interaction, that force carrying particle uh, is something called the virtual photon. So if we want to draw the Feynman diagram for that process, Feynman diagrams are schematic diagrams which we think about as happening almost on a graph where we've got two axes. The vertical axis is time and the horizontal axis represents space or position. So if we want to draw a particle such as an electron, so any lepton or hadron uh, that we want to draw a Feynman diagram for, we always draw it as a straight solid line um, and it'll have an arrow on it. So for an electron, we'll look something like that. So this is on a, a slant, just representing the fact that as time moves on, as we scan up the page, the position of the particle in space is changing. It doesn't matter exactly how steep this line is. We're not representing any numerical information here about how fast the particle is traveling or anything like that. We're just simply representing the fact that we've got an electron and it's moving uh, with some velocity. So if we've got electron scattering, we must also have another electron. And so we'll draw that in like that and they're slanting towards each other, just showing us that they're, they're getting closer to one another in space. Now, um, we can represent the emission of the virtual photon like this. We're gonna draw a change in direction of the this electron line. Um, and that's just representing the fact that its velocity has changed. And the reason its velocity changes is that it has emitted a virtual photon. So we draw uh, different uh, exchange particles using different types of line in Feynman diagrams. For a virtual photon, we're gonna use a wobbly line like that. Later on, we'll look at the different lines that we'll use for, for example, W uh, bosons that, that carry the weak force. So we draw that uh, virtual photon line on a slant. Okay, we, it's not horizontal because it's traveling at the speed of light, which is a finite speed. A horizontal line on a Feynman diagram would uh, indicate or suggest something that traveling at at an infinite speed, so we, we draw it on a slant. Now, a short time after it's emitted, 
that virtual photon is going to be absorbed by this second electron and that's going to cause that electron to change its velocity, to change its momentum. So that's one of the possible Feynman diagrams that we could draw to represent uh, electron scattering. Now, we can also draw a second diagram. Instead of this first electron emitting the virtual photon, we could draw the electron on the right emitting the photon. So this diagram here is representing exactly the same observable process of two electrons scattering from one another. However, the difference is that the two diagrams are showing in the first case, the, the electron on the left emitting the photon being absorbed by the one on the right. And in this diagram, we've got the opposite case. So these two diagrams, if you were asked to draw uh, an electron scattering Feynman diagram in an exam question, either of those um, would be correct. And in fact, the fact that we can draw different diagrams to represent the same process is, is kind of the point of doing these, these Feynman diagrams. Um, one more example, as well as just different time orderings, so different particles emitting or absorbing the, the exchange particle, we could in fact imagine that this scattering process preceded by the exchange of two photons. Now this is, I think, beyond what you need to do for A-level, but just out of interest to perhaps give us an idea of the point of these diagrams, that there are different ways in which the same observable process could actually be happening we can't tell experimentally which of these processes has happened, but if we consider all the possibilities, um, and in fact, there are, if you think about it, an infinite number of possible ways that this could happen because we could exchange two, three, a million, and so on, photons between them. Um, all those different possibilities um, allow us to eventually calculate the the relative probability of different processes occurring to different particles. One final thing uh, to look at, if we just think about perhaps an electron scattering from a positron, we'll just draw one possible diagram, we'll draw the electron on the left like that, let's say that the electron emits the photon and it's absorbed a short time later. So remember, as we scan up the page like this, we're looking at things that are happening at the, the same time. So the electron emits the photon, the virtual photon, and then a short time later, it's absorbed by the positron. If we have antiparticles, such as positrons, in our Feynman diagrams, we draw the arrows facing down the page. So, although it's tempting to think about these arrows as showing the, the direction somehow that these particles are traveling in, they don't show that. Um, they are indicating, really, if it's a particle or if it's, a, if it's an antiparticle. Okay, so downwards arrows for antiparticles, upwards arrows for particles. Finally, um, one important thing that we can look at for these diagrams is that these junctions where lines join, so we've got a junction of three different lines here, for example, uh, we call these vertexes. 
and at each vertex any conservation rules that we know should apply must be obeyed. So if we look here, for example, we've got an electron coming in, which is a negatively charged particle, minus E charge. And then coming out of that junction, we've got two particles. We've got the photon that's emitted and we've got the electron. And so the overall charge after that vertex is also minus one because we've got the photon, zero charge, and the electron, which is, again, a negative charge. Similarly, with a uh, lepton number, um, if we look at this vertex again, we've got electron lepton number of plus one going in. Coming out, we've got photon, which is zero because it's not a lepton, and we've got electron lepton number plus one. So charge and lepton number are conserved, not just over the whole process, but at each vertex, each junction. Um, of the diagram.